Welcome back. You're listening to Curvaceous Bounty of Sin City on VegasAllNetRadio.com, where you can say whatever the fuck you want. And people are texting me during the show. Do they not know that I'm on the show? What the hell is going on? <laughs> no, they They're don't. They're probably sending no peckers. No, no, it's no peckers. My mom constantly calls me on the show. So during the, our, our half halftime break, I always go outside and go, Mom, why are you calling me? Oh my, I just want to remind you, we go out tomorrow. Drink, everybody. Drink, <laughs> drink. <laughs> and talk her accent until uh, the next drink. Yeah. You know, little mama says her name like that, too. She said, where's the other one with the dark hair? I said, Oma? She said, yeah. Oma. Oma. Yeah, that one. <laughs> I said, okay. The, the other day, I, I was calling her on the phone, and she was like, hi, Oma. <laughs> In the phone. She did. It was so funny. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Mama, introduce our guest next to us. Oh, this my nerdy boyfriend. Your nerdy boyfriend? Oh, I'm sorry. They're, they're chatting about it's sex. Is Vendetta he in said, the, the chat room? Really chat. Did, did Vendetta hear all of our nasty talk about him? Yes, he did. Okay, good. Okay. And it's it, clear it up. It is not It's not in a funnel of some point. No, that's his okay. foreskin. Okay. okay. Okay, I'm done with that. That's okay, right. serious business now, guys. This is Chewy from Baby Daddy Guru. And he came to talk to all you dads out there and fathers that need to be talked to. Or that want to be good dads, right. but don't know how. Right. Correct? Absolutely. Learn how to co-parent. Well, yeah. How's everybody doing? Thank you guys for having us on today. Good. Well, Thank pleasure. you. Who, who's also with you here? Uh, this is uh, one of my good friends here and proud member, uh, Daniel Snyder. I thought Daniel mm-hmm. was going to run out the door when we started talking about Pecker Pages. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. He's like okay. I told you, I'm hung like a super gnat. So <laughs> when, when I can find a, a, a small enough camera to get... Close enough, maybe I'd be able to take a picture. I, of I, I'll volunteer for that job. We've, got, we've got a high definition oh, webcam right you here. Have My phone's got big magnify- We might have to borrow the Hubble's telescope for this. <laughs> <laughs> Why do men joke about their penises being yeah. small? I don't know. You know what? Every guy that I've ever met who says, Oh, it's tiny, it comes out, it's like eight and a half inches. You're like, Jesus Christ. Yeah, nothing but what are you comparing it to? Small dick too. <laughs> oh, see, we like to surprise when we get you on your face. You know, I so. guess. <gasps> That's true. <gasps> That's true. Oh, my God, you can't put it in. So tell us, Mr. Chewy, what baby. BabyDaddyGuru.com is? Basically, it's a website designed for uh, the emotional end that fathers go through fighting for their children. Um, there's plenty of places to get uh, court help, but there's really no place for the emotional end, a shoulder to cry on. There's really nobody really empathetic. You're either a deadbeat dad or that's pretty much it. But there are tons of good dads out there, and we help them. Just when their back's against the wall, we basically knock the wall down for them so they can continue fighting. So, so this isn't about. Um, so what you what you focus on is helping fathers with in custody cases or um, just in general how to deal with the uh, baby's mom's boyfriend. You know, don't pay no attention to that. It's not his place. So it's it's not a father per se that's with the mom. No. So it's, it can it's, be with the mom. Okay. Still in a marriage, going through divorce, separated for after years, a and the mom. Baby daddy. Yeah, baby daddy. We also help out baby moms. We we help them kind of stop it. <laughs> so, but no, we definitely are there for the fathers that need it. Right. Well, we've saved a lot of fathers from suicide. We get great stories on the internet. Everything on the uh, on the site has been built from fathers asking me questions. So I'll do the research. If I don't know it, then I put it on there for them so they can always go back and reference it. So Now, did this come out of um, a, a personal experience of your own? Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hell yeah. How many baby mama you got? I got three. Three Ooh. separate baby mama? Three separate baby mama. Oh, my God. And you, you have get... trouble with all of them? One. Oh, okay. The Just first one. one. The first one. No. The first last. marriage. The first marriage. She's the third one. Oh. Yeah. So um, bottom line is one day we were fighting and it's been going back and forth, back and forth. And I just lost it one day, jumped on the camera, put it on Facebook. Several fathers called me and we all talked it out. And somebody said, dude, you're like the baby daddy guru. So I was like, I like that. So I made a quick phone call and uh, put the website together. And at first it was just me. All I, you know, I hid cameras. I had cameras out and open, and I'm videotaping my experiences. And eventually, I slowly disappeared, and more and more information, and more and more fathers started getting involved. So I slowly disappeared, and they appeared, and more and more websites are talking to me, and we're sharing articles and things like that. When before, other father websites or organizations around the world they would keep to themselves or in their area so we're all now coming together 
So what's the number one thing that baby daddies need help with that you guys help them with? To be honest, open in their mouths. Say something. Don't be pissed off. Say something. Get Talk to somebody. There's always somebody there for you. Your mom, your dad, your best friend, your buddy that just went through court through 18 years of paying child support. You got to open your mouth. You know, closed mouths don't get fed. Now, do you... Um, you I, I, I know that you provide resources for uh, men to be able to go to court, uh, lawyers and things like that, you know, links. Actually, not not lawyers per se, but just a general information like guidance um, we're putting together. We have a few videos like um, I met a couple of men and a lot of them had just won their children and don't know how to do hair. So we put a video up to, you know, two quick, simple like oh, hair dads. to help dads. Um, how to date a, a, um, a father, how to date a man out of a relationship. We put that on there. Other guidances um, to help um, fathers with, you know, if the boyfriend is messing with you, just ignore him. It's not his business. Or same thing with the moms. If It's not the dad's business. You know, everyone's got to play respect. It's all, in the end of the day, it's all about the children and the guidances, the laws, the interviews. That's the message. Right. Um, do you offer consultation services like taking a look at how they uh, a, a father interacts with their baby mama so that you can let them know well maybe you shouldn't do this and maybe you oh should yeah talk this way I'll get I'll get a phone call in the middle of the night from California and I'll talk to a father for a few hours and he's crying and I'm walking him through it like this is what you need to do this is how you handle it next time you know document start recording your items so that way when it goes down in court you have your backup you know so i i'll sit with you on the phone all night all day i'll skype with you you know because i went through it with my 16 year old and i didn't have anybody else 15 you know going to wow. court and nobody told me anything I, I had to learn everything the hard way in court and how things work you know i don't want i don't want that same feeling that i went through with my first oldest one and what i'm still i'm still going through it in court i got a court coming up recent I don't want people to go through what I've gone through. I want them to be like how I am now. Oh, she's not letting me have my kids? Well, my kids love me. All right, I'll just see them next time I'm able to see them. It, you should have that type of attitude because once a vicious parent gets a hold of you emotionally, they're going to turn your whole world upside down, and mm -hmm. we're here to prevent that. So if, if I take away your power, you're not going to bother me anymore. So there's really nothing you could say or do to make me upset. Are you referring to, like, um, women who use their children as pawns? Leverage. Oh, yes. Right. Okay. okay. Those bitches yeah. make me mad. Oh, they're, they're so they're what you're them. saying, so what you're saying to some fathers is call their bluff. Call their you bluff. You're not going to piss me off and use my kid as leverage and say, you can't see them this weekend. Right. I'm just going to back off for a minute, let you get your shit together and your brain together about what's right for my kid, right. and maybe next week you'll let me see them. Yeah, but that's not always easy, though, because I'm, I'm going through the same thing at our house, you're, and that's not always easy. You're absolutely right. I'll tell you the truth. Uh, this happened uh, a few weeks back. Me and my ex-wife went through it again, and the court said I'm supposed to do a court order, and what, we have three children. And I was supposed to get the youngest one, and it was a court order. She never showed. So I did the most hardest thing. I took my two other kids. They want their brother with them. And I dropped them off at their grandmother's and told them goodbye. I haven't seen them since. We have court coming up. But that's hard. You know, you say that I'm not there, but I'm there. I'm like, what do they need? I'm here. Where are you at? Do you worry that when these kids get older... Because the image that they have in their head is dad dropping them off at grandma's and saying goodbye, that when they get older, like, dad, you didn't fight for me hard enough, or dad, you didn't want to see me hard enough. I'm, I'm, I'm just asking. I'm playing no. the devil's advocate. Does no, that absolutely. ever run? You know, no. whether or not you know what's going I on between you and the, the wife. I told them the truth. I said, I made a promise to them the first time we were going through custody. I said, I just want us to stop fighting. You know, I want me and your mom to stop fighting. You know, at the end of the day, we all have to be happy for you guys. And unfortunately, it's not in her mind that way. It's all about her, what I've done to her. Right. Not the kids. Right. So when I dropped them off, I told them, I'm doing this because I love you and I made a promise. There will be no more fighting. And I told them, when you get of age to leave your moms, look me up. I asked them, what's my name? They knew my name. And my cell phone number will never change. And they know it by heart. So. How old are these kids, though? Nine and seven. I don't know how I feel about that. I'm just being very honest. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I have a daughter who, if her father walked down the street, she wouldn't know him. Um, be, 
you know, because of because a lot of the a same things. Job. Yeah. The but, we don't, uh, be, uh, uh, disclaimer, Baby Daddy Guru does not help out deadbeat fathers. Good. We do not. Good. But at the same time, if they're willing to change, the mother has to, we, we, try, we help mothers understand that at, at a certain point, what if the father wasn't ready? Right. It, it go, you know, you can't have it one way or the other. If he's not ready, he's not ready. But when he's ready to come back and go in hard, you have to let him. You have to let him. Don't hold it over his head. Well, where were you? He's there now. You know, that's what we... we well, we, I'm we, not thinking of somebody else. I'm, I'm thinking of the outcome on these children. I mean, I've seen a lot of children that grew up without their fathers. or So, you know, it's, it's known that a child does better with both parents absolutely. involved. And, and yay for family. Like, I always tell, Sierra has got... I mean, her and her baby daddy has have a great relationship and a great understanding when it comes to the kids and I admire that but we, right. work, but we worked you really work hard, hard at it, at it. Yeah, and, right. there, and in the beginning it was not easy it, it took both of us to it took both of us basically shouting at each other and then starting to listen to each other to get to right. that point and thank I, god you could get there that's what the sad part is, is that the, some parents can't get there she, unfortunately the my baby mom will never be there we, she she was sad. Willing, that's sad and see I have a problem with the well you're here now See, if that was just the case and you came back and and you were just coming back into acting right, then then that's okay. When you come back and you've been gone for five to six years, um, and then you come back and tell these children what the people that they have been living with are all doing wrong and, and trying to mess up and pull the household, mess up the household, then I have a problem with that. No, no, it's not okay that you're back now. Yeah. Are you saying as far as the father left and he's talking this? No. Or? Okay, I'm going to tell you. It's, this is personal. Um, my DJ, um, we have, since I've been together with him, we've had custody of his three oldest children. There was a point where the mother left. She was nowhere to be found because her and I got into it. And I said, I'm tired of you telling these kids you're going to pick them up and do this stuff. And you don't come and we have to fix everything. So you either take us to court. Or you come back when they're 18. She disappeared, was on drugs and all kind of other stuff, tried to kill her other kid's baby daddy with a, with a hammer, um, and was gone for six years and came back. Now is like CPS and all kind of other different stuff and um, trying to tell these children that we are wrong. We, they shouldn't be doing chores. They shouldn't okay. be doing this. That. So, so I have a, a couple problem with just saying, oh, she came back, so that's all. Well, there's a couple of things. One... All parents shouldn't fight regardless. They should not. Where you have and what you need to do and all that stuff shouldn't happen. What needs to happen is if the person decides to leave and they got their stuff together and they're ready to do what they have to do, everybody should let that parent try. Now, if that parent disappeared again, all bets are off. <laughs> Yeah, you know. Well, I see. Yeah, there's, there's a whole. What's bunch. going on is, what, more what, what, it, but yeah. What I'm hearing is the way you're explaining it to me is you have more of an issue with it than how come the father didn't just talk to her. Oh, like, no. you understand what I mean? Like, there's a point where the step-parent has to know their place. We do teach that. The step-parent can't interfere between two parents of the children. Well, I... I All right, I, Mama, I Mama, I'm going to speak up for one I've, minute on I've your stepped, behalf. I've stepped back a lot, but... The you whole, kind of understand what I'm saying, right? Like, Ma, uh, Well, the so thing much. is, is that These you're talking... Children, in, this de right. in this decision, one of the, the one of the children, you know, was there when he was very young, and this was his mother, and right. he called her mother, and all of a sudden, this woman shows back up, and it literally is telling this boy... To not listen to her, and this is not—that's not right. That's right. right. You exactly. Give, you she's have to give, she's diagnosed schizophrenic. So you, she's crazy. You have to give everyone respect. All the people that are carrying your child. Right. You have exactly. To, you have to all work exactly. together. That's what. That's and, what we and teach. And that's why I'm saying I have right. a problem with. Oh, she just came back. No, she came back with with her horns sharpened. You can't do that. Ready, no, no, ready no. to fuck when, the family when, up. Let's say, let's say me and you had kids, and I was like, you know <laughs> what? They look like are they cute? Oh, they they'd be gorgeous. They'd be gorgeous. And I decide, you know what, I just am not ready for this. And I leave. But if I come back and you're with somebody, I'll be like, let me meet who, who's who been to, in my place. And we all become adults about it. Right. Okay, like, okay, I want to slowly get back into my children's lives. I would like to at least get a day. Or let's do it all together. Let's all get together so they know things are okay. And then we slowly start building that relationship. And then... I would get back into it because you, I'm ready. Yeah. Do you do sometimes of that, like a little bit of mediation between the parent, the mother, and the father to try to get them to sit down and cohabitate and make decisions together? Unfortunately, mothers, a lot of mothers hate us. 
Because, well, I think that's wrong. Well, we, that's because they're not looking out for the well, best that's effort of the child. They, well, yeah. and the other thing is, most of these women who have baby daddy, they they are they are the epitome of baby mama drama, and they're yes. assholes, and they are a bad bad representation of single. Uh, single parent. I live mothers. with one. I mean, don't get me wrong. There are some outstanding mothers that do it on their own. There are, and then that they have great relationship with three baby daddies, and they all get along. And why can't it be like that? You I know? agree. So yeah, we yeah. we work very hard to just make it peaceful for the children, because at the end of the day, the children are listening. That someone's arguing in another room, or maybe the mom is talking mess. Well, your dad's a deadbeat. No child needs to hear that because the only image they think is, "Oh, that's my dad." Well, right. she can't. She can't never say that about him. So that there, if she ever even tried to say it to fix her mouth to say that shit, she, you know, she no. <laughs> no. Well, that's one thing I will. I right, coming from <laughs> the 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 side where you know everything's kind of copacetic on my end it's uh it was it was hard it was not easy to come to this it, it took us the first year we were not together we were still living together right and that was really hard um but it helped because he learned that even though i was out dating other people i wasn't just taking my son to meet guys just my son probably met two maybe three of the guys that I dated before I finally settled down with the guy that I'm with and and I'm, I made it very clear to all of those men like my son's father is his father and he doesn't need another daddy I don't want another daddy for him um, I, I would be more than happy to have you as a, as a great male role model for my son but I don't need you to daddy him see if people laid the guidelines down like right on front street then a lot of people wouldn't have issues it's, like it's my way easier to lay my that ex's down. boyfriend Stepped up to me the first day I met him and tried to punk me in front of my kids. And we almost got into a fist fight because my kids came outside when they first heard about the website. And I told them, hey, guys, just go back in. I was being calm. Mm -hmm. And then he's like, hey, get back in the house. I was like, whoa, whoa, that's your first that's your first and last warning ever. I'm here. I don't care yeah. what you do. And if, if my kids act up and the mom is disciplining them and since you're there, if you want to discipline them the right way. But I have no issue. The, the children got to respect. Children have to respect. Right. But don't don't try to puff chest in front of me. You're going to lose. So, you know, we, we, we work on that a lot. And, you know, it's a shame that people just can't do it. Pride. Yeah, too much. Or they can't let go yeah. that that person left. And my ex is, uh, well, and, and they boyfriend looks like me. Oh, that's funny. Which is funny. Well, and they can't, I mean, let's, the, the bottom line, the everybody's um, good intent should all be towards the children. Absolutely. And sometimes that's not what's in the forefront of people's minds. That's what we're here for. We're selfish. We, we're, we're here to help any and everybody out. And if you can't find what you're looking for, they can contact me, email me. It's all there. And I will, I'm on it. Actually, you know, I, I wanted to answer the question she was asking. Um, you asked about what a father feels if, if their children is out there and um, do they feel they'll ever get to see the kid again? That is a good question because to me, my daughter is 18 years old and I haven't seen my child since uh, 2000. That's she very was, sad. And, and the thing is, is I mean, even like last she year. She was five. I, she was five years old. She was born 94, so nine, five, six, six years old. Okay. Uh, she met uh, my, my youngest daughter with, with my wife, current wife now when uh, she had just uh, six months old. We'd seen him for when we were in Chris uh, for Christmas when I was stationed over at Fort Campbell, Kentucky. Now, last year my mother passed away. Now they were close with my mother, okay. And um, I called them up and told them, "Hey, your grandmother's passed away." And they asked me. Both my daughters asked me, "Hey, we want to come to Vegas. We want to be there at the funeral." So no questions asked. And this is kids you haven't studied in like this fifteen with, years. The, I haven't seen for a long time. Okay. okay? So no questions asked. I don't I didn't even have to hesitate about it. I bought the tickets online, sent it to him, and everything. The mother calls. She's upset because I did not discuss with her <coughs> that they were coming here. And I told her, "Is like, look, the children. She is 17 years old. She's about to turn 18 at the end of the year. She can. If she wants to come here, she can come here. It's her. It's her decision. She wants to see her grandmother." It came down to basically boiling out to saying that uh, they weren't able to come. I, lost, I had to pay back the, the tickets. I lost the money on it. So have I seen him yet? No. A am I ever going to see him? I don't know. I, I fear that I probably will never get to see him. 
unless my daughters decide to finally come see me. And we it's end. it's it's a it's a bad thing, and I, you know I feel fathers that are out there. Will they ever get to see their children? And well, you know, and I I'm wondering that. if that didn't cause some strife between your daughter and her mother. I mean, I obviously know. the daughter contacted you and said, "Dad, I want to I want to come to Grandma's funeral." The thing is, is you know I don't talk to the wife, that ex-wife. I don't talk to her anymore. It's we we left with a bad relationship. All right, can I ask you this? Um, and I'm kind of putting you on the spot here, but over all those years, fifteen years or so. Yeah. Did you ever make any effort to get in contact with your daughters? I keep uh, I keep good contact with them on Facebook. I call them. Okay. So, so they we, know we, you're available. They know I'm okay. available. They okay. know I'm That's there. That's good. You know. Okay. But uh, as for them coming to see, I mean, what was it? Uh, I would say maybe eight years ago. Now, was there ever any court order from that said that you had some sort of custody or visitation rights? That's where she tricked because me. Because if the visitation rights were there, they should have been able to get on that plane and come see you. See, that was that's what I got tricked on. I was in the service, okay? When I met her, I was in the service. So she married me when I was in the Army, okay? Uh, we went through our little ups and downs, and next thing I know, things start falling apart. I decided to step out of the Army to try to save our marriage. It didn't work. We left. We separated. We started filing our divorce and everything. I go back into the service. I get reassigned to Panama. I, I have a lawyer taking care of everything. I receive a letter from my lawyer stating that she's uh, trying to, you know, for uh, custody of the children in Virginia. Um, that, uh, what was it, uh, I wasn't able to be there at court because I was overseas and I was doing my job, right? Apparently, because I wasn't there, I lost full custody of my children. Yeah, you, you had even a with a proxy lawyer. lawyer. Even you had a stank ass yes. lawyer, and there's got to be something in place that <laughs> for the military that, that no. you should be able to have. You know, but you're a military man. You're defending our country. Somebody has to defend you. Me, as you know, not knowing all the laws or anything, I didn't even think about it. I was like, you know what? Fine, I'll keep in touch with my kids. Whatever it is, I did not learn all of that stuff until I got here to Vegas, and I actually. How I found out is I was going to school in Arizona, and she was, you, you know what double dipping is, right? Right, yeah. right, right. She was, I was paying child support through Virginia, and I was paying, and then she was saying she wasn't receiving it, so Arizona got kicked in, so I was getting charged twice. Oh. Yeah, lovely. We fight like piece that. of work. We make sure yeah. people know so, about that. That's good. Now, I was actually referred to a gentleman that's here, here in Vegas, um... Uh, I can't remember his name. Oh, Ernest. Ernest. Yeah. I don't know if you guys know Ernest. A very good guy. Equal rights for Equal divorced rights fathers. Equal rights for divorced fathers. Good guy. Yeah. Good guy. Is now, he an attorney? No. They, they actually handle the legal end of family court yeah. for just fathers. Okay. okay. DJ okay. has been there a lot. Okay. I call, I call it the He-Man Woman Haters Club because they, uh, <laughs> they do not like women okay. in there at all. Okay. You know, I, I love what they did for him, right. but they don't like girls I mean, at all. Okay. I'll tell you. Okay. <laughs> I handle the emotion and he DJ will probably tell you that they do drop the B word a lot and let's get her and I, I don't know what they say in there because what? I pulled up with him into the parking you lot. Couldn't get in? Somebody came out. Sheila? I no, a guy. Oh a guy. You can come in, but she can't. Okay, I'll tell you the story. Wow. Okay. Yes. There's yes. A, there's a, I love what they did for them <laughs> and I tell everybody about them. But do not go there if you're a girl. Okay, I'll, I'll tell everybody <laughs> that's listening, there's a reason why women can't go to Equal Rights for Divorced Fathers. I was uh, 15 when I first found them, word of mouth. And there's a picture of a guy in the, in the office of a football player. And I had asked Ernest, how come females don't come in here? And he pointed to the picture, and he said he knew him. That was his best friend. And the day that that father went to go get his kids... The boyfriend opened the door, and the mother took the 12 gauge and shot him in the face. Majority of the men that go to wow. that building deal with serious issues from crazy women. So what happens is we'll take mommy here, who's very passionate about her children, going in in there. The men don't need to be around other women. They need to be around other men so they don't lose it because they're dealing with a lot. And if the wrong person comes in there, you might set a guy off. That's the only reason why. It's for the safety of everybody. I, I, wow. I, I get it. And, and I still call it the He-Man Woman. Club. <laughs> it's, it, it, but it's I love what like, they do. It's so. a lot like a, a battered women's um, safe house. Right. Right. Men are not allowed in there. Men are right? not allowed in there. For the no. same reasons. Yeah. yeah, yeah for so the exact same when you go to No matter equal how rights, nice the guy is, he still right. can't come in. And equal rights, they're, very, they're not empathetic for any men's problems. They're like, okay, this is what you need to do. Here's your paperwork. Just get it done. They get the business in. Yeah. Where we come in is we want to hear it. Let it out. You can't bottle it up. It's okay you, to cry, man. Yeah, absolutely. You'd be amazed on how many men that are about my built cry. 
And well, then you just say it's okay. You say okay. it's okay. It is okay. And so we say, what's the element? I show them where they need to look at and help them out. I help convicts out with links and places like um, there. I found the awesome website uh, for felons that can get great jobs. Really? That's I, great. Um, I help out fathers who have to pay child support. Um, there's an employment section, and it's over 300 links to jobs. So you don't have to leave the house. You can apply over 300 links. And then um, there's uh, father links for other men that are around the world. I found websites that are dedicated to them in their area, uh, the judicial system, stuff like that. So we have a question in chat. Do you guys help dads in other states? Absolutely. Absolutely. All they got to do is contact me. I will definitely help them. Why don't you give out your info real quick since they're oh, listening? Absolutely. Uh, website's uh, babydaddyguru.com. Uh, you can email me at Keelan, K-I-L-A-N, at babydaddyguru.com. And if you'd like to call me, I don't mind, it's 702-544-7124. Awesome. awesome. 24 hours a day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right, yeah. Now, I may, I may talk about baby, baby daddy to you just because he needs emotional support. I know he does. Let's talk oh, about the please, events you man. have coming up. Did we discuss that yet? The event? No. No, okay. no, he can. no, we have not spoke about that. I heard uh, Mama's going to walk with me 64 <laughs> miles. I never said around that. Around that miles. Four miles. I'm gonna, four I'm gonna miles. I, I decided I was going to send DJ to be our proxy. Yeah. That sounds we'll, good. We'll give him a, the pink shirt and make him walk. <laughs> No, we got on May 25th. I didn't realize this was Memorial Weekend, but what a better weekend. People are here in town, and we'll walk. Well, actually, it's just me, and people are allowed to join. I'm walking 64 miles around Las Vegas. DI in Buffalo, Buffalo to Tropicana, Tropicana to Boulder Highway, Boulder Highway to Lake Mead Parkway in Henderson, out to Lake Mead. And how long do you think it's going to no, take? No, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. He's not even, he's just telling you he's walking, but there's this more the route. Oh, there's, there's, there's more. more to it. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. So, so I'm going from Lake Mead to Lake Mead Boulevard and back to Buffalo and back to DI. 64 miles. The goal is to do it in less than 36 hours. So this is a nonstop walk. So, but, but I'll, I'll let my, my buddy That's here, not all. Okay. I'll let him <laughs> tell you guys. Now, now the, we came up with this idea that... The father, when the father has a child and they go through everything, they have a lot of burden. And they don't know what the burden is going to be. And it's a lot that's going to be on their shoulders. So we decided, you know what? The best way to represent these burdens, let's put weights on him. Wow. Yes. So what we're yes. going to do is he's going to have two wrist weights, two ankle rate, uh, waist, uh, weights, and a vest with weights. Each one representing different things. Um, whether it be court, uh, financial, um, emotion. A lot of them, okay? I so what he's going to basically doing is every 10 to 12 miles will have a checkpoint. As as you can see, we would love to be at one of those checkpoints. Well, the first one right now we have is BJ's, right, right on Tropicana, just yep. behind uh, MGM. Or not, thank yes, you for MGM. You're going yes, to hit you. a shot of tequila for the next leg, right? When you're at BJ's? <laughs> Actually, the cool part is uh, Patricia, the owner of BJ's right there behind MGM, uh, she's going to definitely have a water station, and she's going to feed all those that are walking at this uh, event so oh, that's nice. the first stop. are you taking pledges do we have the news coming i mean this is huge let's We've let people been, know right, about as, this as of right now we're dealing with lake mead yes lake right. mead has put a stint in it as of right now well Whoa. actually and we got the letter from the department of forestry of interior at lake mead. now as you what we were explaining this this is not really a big uh, what we got demonstration. It should okay. be. Uh, we're not assembling anywhere. Next year it'll be great. So. Yeah, right. that, you know, this is the first time doing this. Now, I don't, I don't see. You've seen this. Uh, what was it? Uh, just a couple weeks ago, he just stopped here in Vegas. He was riding from Florida to Washington <gasps> on a bike to, on a bicycle to help support injured soldiers. I think. Right. I think he um, was on a uh, Fox. I think DJ yeah. actually saw him or something. He met him. I think. Because, you know, he rides his bike everywhere. Right, right, right. So right. He met the, him. the question that we were, you know, we were concerned about is, do we have to have a permit to do this walk? Because, you know, it, it will gather attention. Right. Now, I talked with uh, with Public Works, Clark County Public Works, and they said, well, it's not a public assembly. You're just walking, so no, you don't need a permit. The problem we had is Lake Mead, since it's a national forest, said that we have to have a permit because we're doing an assembly. So they actually gave us, what, four different spots where we can gather but the thing is, we're not gathering. They we're just knew, they knew walking through. I'm just walking through. through it. I'm just walking through, and I'm not kind of. I'm not going out to the lake. I'm just right. taking the road. Right. I'm just transferring from Henderson to east side of town, 
and they're telling me that the park rangers will be involved and so the, the can biggest you can't change, change the route to like, get away from that. The route. Can you do it on another day? And I was no, like, just change the route yeah. so you don't have to go by Lake Mead. There's well, a lot in Boulder City. You that's know, that's right? the thing we're no? not going to do. We're, we're not, not. We're not changing okay. anything. Because no, so here's the suggest, thing: is yeah. you know, I mean, well, we, if you think about it, it's kind of almost like a mother trying to stop you from seeing your kids. Are you going to see your kids? Or are you going to change your route? I'm going to see my kids. So I'm still going to walk. I'm going to walk. All you should have to do is pay the fee to get onto the recreation <coughs> area, walk through the recreation area. You don't. You don't. You don't have to pay when you're actually walking. But you have to pay it when there's a vehicle. So we will pay because we have a mobile vehicle that will be following no, us. No, if they're going to charge us, fine. Be it, be yeah, whatever. We'll pay, it. We'll pay so. whatever. Okay. But, I mean, the thing is, is this is going to be another burden that we have to go through. This is right. a, a big obstacle that we're going to have to see. Right. If, if you're a father, yeah. You know. have, you, have you contacted any of the news um, stations that maybe somebody could help we, you with We're that? not really one of the put anybody's name out there like a well uh, there's a big data guru should be out there well there's well, some of them like um i i know that i had an instance with a business at one point and i believe it's channel 13 and they help and they they have a lot of people that talk to people about different stuff and help you with things so you might want to i don't i don't mean to put michael was it michael fiber no it's a uh, jason Feinberg. oh jason Feinberg. jason Feinberg, you know? we, we don't want to put him out there but we he heard about what we were doing and was very interested to put us on the news on Fox Five News. Yeah. And unfortunately, we haven't got a response back from the email we sent him that he asked us to do. When when we're off air, we'll talk. Absolutely. We we've been trying. Uh, we've had a couple of doors slam in our face because unfortunately, fathers do get a bad rap, and they, a lot of people think this is a joke. Okay. Now I want to ask you a question here. Um, you're doing this walk. Yes. Obviously, it's to generate recognition for what you do and to prove a point of the burdens, or but, is, uh, it a, it, is it something that people sponsor you financially as a fundraiser? If somebody I mean, wants, I hate to see you walk oh. 64 miles for no reason. No, it is for, it's, uh, it's, it's a metaphor for being a parent. Okay. I'm going to go that extra mile. I'm doing it for every parent that's in their mind, think they can't do it. Every father that's hit the end of their road. That rope, okay. they don't have that, that extra strength to keep going. Keep going. Uh, if I could walk 64 miles, whether I get a sponsor, a building, or anything, because I'm going to be filming it, taking good, pictures, good. so people can see down the road I did that, then they might be inspired to continue doing what they do. You know, we provide music videos on the website, and a father emailed me, and um, I swear to you, was that Selena Gomez song, uh, what was that, with her and the that first song she came out with, uh, I'm a Disney princess? No, it was the one telling about <laughs> little girls, you don't have to be like the rest of society, be yourself. And her father thanked me because his daughter changed her whole aspect because he showed her that video. That video? Aww. So if one small thing that I can do to help a father keep pushing or help a mother realize she's the issue, then I must continue to walk. I have to do this. So if people want to donate, they could do it on the on the website. It's right there as soon as they go. What's the significance of 64 miles? Just tearing up the valley because the first one we did, um, we were trying to go nonprofit. This is in efforts to, but if it happens, it happens. I'm not worried about it. We walked from downtown Fremont to Excalibur, 6.6 uh, .6 miles, and we did it in six hours. We raised the money. A father needed help in California and said that he needed legal fees to see his children that weekend. I said, well, contact, let me get a hold of your lawyer. I spoke to the lawyer to find out it was legit. Of course, I did my background check, and I wired the money to the lawyer. He got to see his kids and sent me the picture. Unfortunately, that, that was for something a little bit bigger, but that's what I'm here for. I'm here to just, I'll give you the shirt off my back if you need it, shoes, baby cribs, whatever I can come across. If a father needs it, he will have it before I could ever use it. Okay, so I'm reading this, uh, what is it, your press release or your information page. Two unknown pound weights, one on each ankle representing the family court system. Yes. One ankle represents the financial burden of the court system, while the other ankle represents the battles and burden of custody. Yes. Two unknown pound weights, one on each wrist, representing the different types of resources. One wrist represents the ignorance of a parent towards knowing what to do, while the other wrist represents the knowledge of what resources are needed. Yes. Then the final weight would be an unknown pound vest that represents the emotional burden that a parent will go through. And I'm assuming that's the biggest one because that's the biggest burden. Absolutely. Uh, from not knowing when the child will be seen again to the deep depression a parent will go through. The journey of the founder is meant to bring parents together for the promise of well-rounded offspring who can give back to a greater degree in the future. You are the main driver in your child's life as they are the vital engine in yours. Yes.
A father wrote this whole article for me. That's fabulous. Yeah. Now, you said 64 miles, right? Yeah. Why 64? Right. Well, the last one was 6.6 .6 miles. This is 64 miles. Once this gets established, every year on May 25th, I'm going to be gearing up for walking from here to California shoreline. Wow. Which what? is how many miles? Probably 400 and something, 500 miles. Jesus Christ. And then once that one is established, I'll be walking Route 66 from wow. California to New York. How are you training for this? I'm not. <laughs> He's Whoa. I was, 15, I was 15 with my first kid. He's got to be on walkabout. No training for, for being no, a dad. No, no training. There was, when I was, I found out I had a kid when I was 15, I just had to That's do what I had to do. a lot of walking. It is. A lot. You're going to need a lot of shoes. Good for you. I am going to need <laughs> shoes. If anybody out there wants to let me borrow a pair of their shoes, I would appreciate that. Babydaddyguru.com. The, the, oh, wait, 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 hold on. The no, act, no actual training represents that we are not aware of what burdens a parent will encounter, but he will be allowed to perform a standard workout. Oh, you will be allowed to perform a standard workout regime. Yeah, push-ups, sit-ups. <laughs> and you won't even know how much weight you're going to be wearing. Nope. In your vest. Who's doing that? You? Oh, that would be me. Okay. <laughs> it all depends on how pissed off I am that day. Do not let the army man be in charge of the weights on your vest. He will kill you. Hey, hey I'm ex-military, too. If you want to help uh, sponsor uh, this walk, uh, which represents the burdens that a parent goes through trying to see their child, visit babydaddyguru.com. There's yeah. a donate button right at the bottom of yep, the page. On the splash page, yep. Right. And then there's a, contri a contribution on the menu thing. So. Right. And then uh, you're on Facebook as well? Absolutely, Baby uh, Daddy you, Guru. You, let's give out your information again so people can oh, actually call you. you got, absolutely. Um, you can follow us on Twitter, uh, babydaddyguru.com. Facebook is Baby Daddy Guru. Uh, my email again is uh, Keelan, K I L A N, at babydaddyguru.com. Uh, website, babydaddyguru.com. And my phone number, 702 544 7124. That's fabulous. If That's anybody fabulous. wants to walk, if you want to make right. your statement. Absolutely. There, Just you jump that. in. And they, call yeah, me. they don't have to go the whole 64 no. miles. They can do a leg or they can and do a mile. And let me where is the finish line? Back at DI in Buffalo. And when do you expect to be there? I don't know. I'm guessing maybe 36 hours from the be from the start. Okay. It, so you're trying to do about two miles an hour. But that's the rate I, you're trying to Well, I'm going to be probably covered in weights. You know, so probably maybe less. <laughs> so well, at, at some point, you're going to take some of those off, so it'll it'll get slightly yeah. Yeah. easier. If not, not that it gets easier in life, but it'll get easier if for everybody, your walk. Yeah, when we get done with everything, hopefully by the end of this week, we should have all five major stops where people can wait. You know, what we're going to do is you're going. I'm going to put my number on the site and say call me to find out where I'm at. So that way you're not, you know, you can continue with your day. And then as soon as I get close enough, you can be there and walk with me to the next stop or halfway, you know. But it I'll just bring you a bottle of water. I walk it. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right. Um, we'll be back uh, with our club calendar and a fashion report or a fashion talk. And then we're going to get down and dirty with Chewy. Fair enough. <laughs> Let's You're do this. You're listening to Convention's Bounty of Cincinnati on Vegas on that radio.com. We'll be right back. <laughs> 